Hey guys! So today we're going to finally make our crops grow. This will probably be a shorter video, we'll probably just do that and fix up a couple things and maybe have a little play around with some of the new features in the new version of Game Maker, like the debugger, just because it's a lot of fun to play around with. So the first thing we're going to do is address something with the grids. As I've been working on some of the stuff we'll be doing in later episodes, I have started to run into problems with creating and destroying of the grids. And basically a big thanks to Ariak again for talking this through with me because I did not know this about grids, but apparently GameMaker indexes grids in not the most helpful way. So you might have seen an instance ID in your game, you might have looked it up or something, and you might have seen that it's like a big number, like 1000345 or something. And you might expect that with a lot of the different objects and data types and sprites and everything, you might have expected GameMaker to just be taking care of them all and compartmentalizing them. Well, that's not really the case. Grids are actually just indexed in numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on for however many grids you have. So right here, when we initialize the variables, and we had to do this because when we check in places like this to see if the grid exists or not, if you don't have this variable already set up, it's going to throw an error and say, you haven't told me what this variable is, so you have to make sure you're initializing them. But we have set them to 0, which is actually treated as a grid index. So it thinks this is like the first grid that you've made, and it thinks it's real, when you set it to zero like this. It thinks it's the grid with the index of zero. So this is very bad, we shouldn't do this. We should actually set this to something like undefined or negative one. And also, in terms of when we should be destroying these grids, we should also have a think about this cleanup event because we put both of the grids in this cleanup event, which means it's being destroyed at the end of every room, at the end of the game, and when the crops object is destroyed. And that's okay for the instances grid. We can have it being recycled every room. That's just keeping all of the instances currently alive in the room. But this crop types one, we do want this to be persistent. We don't want to have to keep making this grid throughout the game. This can persist throughout our game. So we don't have to destroy it here. So I'm actually going to take this out and put it into the game end. But now we should go to the room start and alter this script a little bit because we're no longer checking that it's equal to zero. We want it to be equal to minus one. All right, let's actually start growing our crops. So the first thing I'm going to do is, if you recall, when we are playing through our game, we set the crops to a growth stage of three, just so that we could see what kind of crops they were. Because if you set them to zero, it's just going to be a dirt pit. But now that we're actually going to be growing them properly, let's have them start at zero like they're supposed to. And let's just quickly revisit some of the variables that we've made, because you might, it was a few videos ago and you might have forgotten some of these, because we're going to be using them now. So remember, crop type, well, whatever crop type it was, right? So we had a bunch of crop types here, tomato, potato, carrot, artichoke, and so on. And remember, these are equal to numbers. So tomato was zero, potato one, two, three, four, five, six, blah. So back here, when we were making the crops in the instance create crop script, we were handing over the variables that the crop would need. So we're handing over the crop type and the growth stage duration. So then it will know if it's supposed to be a tomato and then how many days it takes to change its sprite. Remember, that was kind of how we are going to depict it growing. All right. So basically what's going to happen is as it ages, as its days old keeps increasing, once it hits, so let's say, let's just make up one really quickly. So let's just say that it has a growth stage duration of three and it is currently seven days old. So the way we're going to think about this is if it's seven days old and it has a growth stage duration of three, then what growth stage should it be in? Basically, it should be seven divided by three. So how many times does the growth stage duration go into this number? And that's two. So its growth stage should be two. So that is the sort of logic that we're going to be using when we're writing our scripts for it to cause it to grow. The other thing, the other little clause that we're going to be adding is if it hits its maximum growth stage. And remember, that was kind of just because we had basically a limit on the number of sprites and we were using this to kind of calculate this limit. Once it's hit its max growth stage duration, it should be fully grown. And we also set up this little sparkle because I was going to make it sparkle if it was in its full growth stage. And to do that, we were just going to use this little sparkling animation here. All right. So now, firstly, as a little bit of fun, because GameMaker has this new feature now, I just want to show you this new thing called code folding, which is basically if you type, for example, just here, region, and then down here, end region, you can actually just wrap this whole block of code, and we can even give it a name, so planting. And then down here, we can continue to code, and we don't have to look at this. So this is a really nice way of organizing your project. So if you want, you can go nuts and 
put in lots of code folding all over your projects. I love doing things like this because it really helps me concentrate on what I'm doing at the moment and not worrying about all of this other code. You don't have to, obviously, but it's there. All right. Well, basically, we're going to check if an instance exists of OBJ crop and we press a button on the keyboard and I'm just going to make this the G key. Then we're going to do our management of the crop growth in here. So we're going to go with all of the crops that exist. And you can see now why it's really important to have the statement in here, because if we just said with OBJ crop and none existed, you would get an error in your game. So make sure this is there. So for now, let's just put days old plus equals one. And if I just run the game really quick. So if we come and plant something down here, now everything is just being one of those dirt pits. So they're at their zero growth stage. And if we hit G now, well, nothing is actually happening because we haven't changed the growth stage. We're just changing how many days old it is. And so we can't actually visually see this, but if we go into debug mode, so if we hit this button or if you hit F6, your game is going to come up, but this window is also going to come up. And let's just plant a few crops again. And we're just going to hit G a couple times to increase the days old. So we don't get any visual change, but if we come into the debugger and we hit pause, we're going to get a bunch of variables and in our instances come up and we can actually have a look at our crops. So down here, these are our crops and we can check their days old right here. So we can, it's gone up from zero from what we set it originally. And you can actually change these variables from within the debugger, which is really cool. So if we, for example, change the growth stage here to three, and then we come back to the game and we press play. So you can see that it's popped up. It's changed its growth stage. So this is really fun to play with. It lets you change variables on the fly. So we can also change stuff like the player's walking speed or something. So let's just change this to five and nine. So if we come back, hit play and have a run around. So we're much faster. Anyway, let's come back to the game and make our crops grow properly. So make it responsive to how many days old it is. So let's exit out of this debugger and come back to our script. So now, in addition to incrementing the number of days old, we're also going to set the growth stage. So growth stage is going to be equal to however many days old it is divided by the growth stage duration. We actually only want it to be doing all of this if it's not reached its maximum growth stage. So actually let's wrap this in a condition. If growth stage is less than the max growth stage, then you can do all of this stuff and we'll tab that forwards. But otherwise, let's set growth stage to the max growth stage to just make sure that it is at the max growth stage and we will set fully grown equal to true. And we might use this variable later to check if something like if a crop is fully grown, then we can go ahead and pick it. We're not really using that right now, but that's just for later. So if we have a look at that, we should see it growing. So again, let's plant a few crops and let's hit G a couple times. So there we go, we have it growing. And there comes a point where we, if we keep hitting G, they don't grow anymore. And that is because they have hit their maximum growth stage. And if you want, you can run this in the debugger and check that for yourself. So next though, let's add that little sparkle when it hit, has actually hit its maximum growth stage. And I'm just going to do this from within the crops object itself. So I'm actually going to set an alarm. We're going to come into alarm one. We're actually going to change something. So we're going to set sparkle actually not false, but minus one. And then in the alarm, we're going to go sparkle is equal to zero. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. So let's go into the draw and we're going to draw the sparkle here. So if sparkle is larger than or equal to zero, so this will be true for the, any case that sparkle isn't a negative number, then we're going to draw sprite SPR sparkle. And then for the sub image, I'm actually going to set it to the variable sparkle itself. And I'm actually just going to draw this at the XY location, but pushed over a little bit and up a little bit. And you can play around with these numbers to see what looks nice for you, but I think this looks fine. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to increment sparkle as time goes on. So sparkle 
and I'm just going to put plus equals 0.1. So now when it's sparkling, we're going to get this sparkle variable incrementing, which means it's going to be kind of animating this sprite. So finally, we're going to go if sparkle is greater than or equal to the image number SPR sparkle. So this means the animation has gone through completely. It's gotten to the very last frame of the animation. So we're going to go sparkle is equal to minus one. And in this case, so it's gone through one animation, but because it's fully grown, I actually want it to sparkle every few seconds. So we're going to go ahead and set the alarm off again. So we're going to go alarm one is equal to, and I'm going to make this a little bit random. I'm going to put random range every four to five seconds, and then I'm going to times that by the room speed. So now this alarm will keep going off every four to five seconds. Now, the very last thing we have to do is we haven't actually set the alarm off for the very first time, and that will happen once it's hit its maximum growth stage. So we come into crops, we're going to set it off right here. So if it's hit its maximum growth stage, we're going to also set the alarm and we'll just set it to go off after one step. All right, so that should be it. Let's run the game. And let's plant a few plants. And we'll hit G a few times. There we go, so we've got them sparkling. And you'll notice that every time you hit G, it'll actually make it go off. And that's because literally that's what you programmed. And if we wait around a little bit, there we go. So it's going off every four to five seconds. Now, the last thing is you might've noticed when we start the game for the first time and we just have the plants as the pits, it takes a few days for it to grow out of the pit, which that might be fine. But actually what I might do is I might, when it's grown for the very first day, it's going to go straight into growth stage number one after just one day. So we're going to add a line to this code. We're going to alter something. So we're going to have here for the first growth case, we're going to set up a variable called first growth. And by default, this will just be zero, but we're going to go if days old is larger than zero, then we're going to set first growth equal to one. And this is just so on its first day, this number is just zero, but thereafter it will be one. And then we're going to add first growth plus this number. So now we should get one plus the number of days old that it is. So now when we run the game and we hit P and we plant a few plants, and we hit G, then it goes straight to growth stage one. And if we just cycle through it again, there we go. So it's all working perfectly. So that's it for today. We still have a lot more to do. You'll notice if we change rooms and we come back, the plants aren't persistent yet. So we haven't made the plants persistent. It's still something that we need to do. So we'll do that in the next episode. So in the meantime, I hope you're well and I'll see you next time.